Well, hello and welcome to this week's edition of the City Update. I'm your host, Mark Aaron, Multimedia Design Manager for the City of Danville. My guest this week, uh, Chief Philip Broadfoot, of course, the Chief of the Danville Police Department. And uh, Chief's here to talk about uh, crime report, 10-year trends over the last uh, 10 years here in the City of Danville for crime. And uh, Chief actually gave a presentation to Danville City Council in their work session this past uh, week. Here in the city and he's going to give us an overview of what he presented to council and uh chief i appreciate you taking the time to join us today and you were actually on the show it seems like uh, back in october you gave a report to council and then they asked you to come back and, and kind of give them an update right that's correct as a result of the um, increase in uh, shootings that we had during the months of november in December, uh, they requested that I come back and give them an, up, an update. Okay. Well, I know the council was uh, very supportive uh, of you in the department last night. We're going to get into some of the recommendations that they had for, for you all and some of the things we'll be implementing uh, from that here uh, later on the show. But I, I did want to go over um, the presentation that you gave. And uh, we started looking at, I guess, 10-year trends in crime here in the city of Danville. And I guess people are asking, oh, why do we go back 10 years? Why do we do 10-year trends? Well, the reason, Mark, is because um, unless you have a large number of crimes, uh, the data is very um, uh, unique in the fact that for one, uh, let's take murders. You can have three murders one year and five the next or six the next. Right. So you have a 100% increase. Um, and when you look just at those numbers, it's really alarming. But when you look at a over a period of 10 years, you can look at a trend mm -hmm. and it takes into account and evens out the, the ups and downs and it gives you a better picture of what you're really experiencing in your crime. And our viewers are going to see that on the slides we'll yes. present to them today. There's a red line and that's what we call a trend line. Yes. And, and some of the, the numbers will actually go over that line on some years and some will be really a lot lower in, in some years. Can you explain that trend line, how that works? So when uh, viewers are seeing the, the data that we're showing and they'll get a better understanding of Sure, the, uh, the trend line is the uh, red line that comes across the, uh, the graph and the, and the bars on the graph are the actual numbers of offenses. And that fluctuates widely, especially when you're looking at the crimes that don't happen that often, uh, such as murder. We can, uh, during the 10 year period, we had a high of nine or 11 and we had a low of three and that varied every year in between. The trend line is a mathematical computation that is done automatically in the computer and it uh, kind of balances out the highs and the lows and tells you whether you're going up, down, or remaining stable. Okay. And so when we look at, at violent crime here in the community, this is what we talked about this a couple of months ago. Over the past five or six years, the violent crime really has been trending down here in the city of Danville. Uh, that's correct. Really, over the last 10 years, we've okay. been trending down, which is a very, very good thing. Right. And we've been trending down at a rate that is steeper than what the state rate. The state has been trending down also, but we've been trend, trending down faster. Correct. And I know when uh, we're showing maps now just of uh, your aggravated assault, your murder, uh, your robberies, and you see uh, 2008 kind of sticks out on a lot of these figures. Uh, you see uh, a lot of crime, higher crime than in other years in 2008. And uh, you mentioned this to council last night, how economics really does factor into your crime rate. It does. I, when you look at our graphs here, you can see there, there's yeah. clearly 2008 in a number of those crime areas, there was a spike in the num amount of crime. Uh, and the only thing that we can attribute that to is the general overall economic conditions in the whole world, really. Right. And when we talk about uh, your violent crimes, your murder, your aggravated assaults, um, you will see there, I guess, on the aggravated assault graph, 2015 numbers have risen. Yes. Can you explain a little bit about the reasoning behind that? Uh, we started having, uh, experiencing this issue in 2014, and it really hit uh, its peak in 2015. Uh, we had a number of drive-by shootings. And uh, what the rules say when you report an aggravated assault, if somebody comes by and fires into a home where there's 10 people, uh, that's 10 aggravated assaults. It's mm. not one uh, vandalism. It's not one uh, shooting into an occupied dwelling. It's right. 10 aggravated assaults mm. because each one of those 10 people in the home were subject to uh, injury from that bullet. So uh, that's what occurred in 14, 2014 and 15 
we had an increase in the number of the drive-by shootings and uh, that really, we, we had two that created about uh, 15 of the total uh, victims. Mm. Uh, so uh, that's also a troubling thing that we've seen happen, not only here, but also in the state and nationwide. We've uh, learned that there's a uh, tendency to for young people to uh, pull out a weapon right. when uh, they are offended or when they feel that they've been disrespected. Uh, and uh, the old days of, of arguing things out or uh, fighting things yeah. out with your fists are kind of gone, and the weapon comes out first yeah. and creates those, these kinds of incidents. Yeah, unfortunately, it seems like they're reaching for the gun before anything else. Yeah. So. The only uh, hopeful thing in this thing is that very few times do the bullets hit. Right. And we don't know whether that's because uh, they're bad shots right. or whether that it is more of an attempt to intimidate than it is to uh, hit right. and that's kill. Right. Good point. And uh, when we're looking at some of the others, uh, the simple assaults, I know uh, you can see a slight increase there in the last year. But uh, you mentioned the council last night. Uh, some of that may just be the faith in the Danville Police Department because you have a lot of people coming and reporting incidents, and can you just explain a simple assault versus an aggravated assault? A, a, a simple assault is generally when there's no injury. Uh, there mm -hmm. can be a slight injury. Uh, and and uh, the, this, the title of them, an aggravated assault, is mm -hmm. when it goes beyond uh, what a lot of people think is a, is a uh, common uh, dis, uh, dispute where someone pushes someone or shoves someone or punches them one or two times. Mm -hmm. So the simple assaults happen much more frequently than the aggravated assaults. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, uh, but there is a willingness of the parties involved to seek justice for the simple assault. Um, that's a good thing. Uh, that means that uh, many of our citizens have faith in the criminal justice system. Mm -hmm. They have faith in the court system and they have faith that it will um, achieve justice for them. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's what we want. That's what the criminal justice system is for. We would like that people not engage in the simple assaults to start with. Right. But once uh, the line is crossed, then where it belongs is in the criminal justice mm -hmm. system, not in the street like the ass aggravated assaults are occurring, mm -hmm. where people are taking justice into their own hands and then driving by a house and firing bullets into it in order to get what they think is their justice. And I know we look at another graph here, the, the forcible sex, you've seen that uh, continue to rise here in the, in the city of Danville, and I think that's statewide. Yes. And uh, you had a, a reason behind that, is social media. It looks like 2008, you really saw a peak, and it's continued to rise. Yeah, actually really around 2010 is when it yeah. really started taking off, okay. and that uh, we have no direct evidence that this mm -hmm. is the case, but uh, anecdotally what we think is it's the... Uh, advent of social media and all of the connections that are made and uh, and then um, that creates the uh, opportunities for the sexual offenses to take place and that's more than just rape when you look when you're looking at the forcible sex category correct? yes it's, yes it's, it's a lot it's, of other it's any sexual activity okay. that is forced mm -hmm. Now, um, we talk about we talked about this actually the last time we interviewed, but we brought it up again last night. Uh, you did to city council when it came to burglaries. We've seen a, a, a really a decrease in burglaries here in the community, and that's uh, kind of targeting policing and we, we're utilizing analytics to put your officers in the right place at the right time. And uh, so there's really a reason behind that decrease. Yes, uh, we. Uh uh, use some crime analysis tools. Uh, mm -hmm. Our crime prevention officer, Corporal Scares, uh, we sent him to some, uh, some schools and uh, he's used the computer software to analyze all of these and do some, uh, it's really uh, uh, similar to predictions where, right. where we believe that the burglaries will occur next and uh, then we put officers in those neighborhoods in marked cars and to try to prevent the burglaries from occurring. Mm -hmm. We've had excellent success in that, which is why we ask uh, council to approve the crime analyst position, mm -hmm. which will be paid for with a grant for right. three years, but we're going to certainly come back to them at the end of three years and ask them to pick up the full cost of that. Yeah. Um, and probably ask for more crime analysts in the future to help us 
uh, be smarter in how we use our resources. Yeah, that's great. Be more efficient, and the numbers don't lie. They're definitely yes. decreasing when the use of that. And um, one that has been trending upward, uh, it's kind of it fell off a little bit here in 2015, but it had in the past been trending upward, um, is uh, counterfeiting. And uh, I know that's been on the rise, but you said you were able to, to narrow down and I think make an arrest in one case, which kind of brought your numbers down for 2015, right? Yes, uh, counterfeiting has just taken off, um, uh, not only in uh, Danville, but uh, state and uh, national. Um, and of course the bill that is counterfeited the most is the $100 bill. Right. And uh, uh, every now and then we have 20s, but um, it's usually the 100. Uh, we were able last year in 2015 to uh, res uh, make an arrest in one case uh, where uh, one person was responsible for a number of the counterfeit bills that were being okay. passed in the city. And by uh, arresting him and taking him out of, uh, out of the business, uh, we did see a, a, a significant drop in the number of cases. Um, there are a lot of people out there, the quality of the uh, computer printers out there, uh, yeah, there is no reason to believe that it's going to decrease on its right. own. Yeah, and the technology is just getting yes. more sophisticated as the days get longer. Well, um, Chief, let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the things that came up from council last night. Um, one of them was dealing with the number of officers uh, that we have on the force. For our viewers who um, aren't familiar with the numbers that we have, I know council had, had talked about providing uh, four more officers, uh, bringing you up to the ability to have 131 officers, uh, 135 officers. Uh, versus the 131 now. So that that's really going to benefit you in a lot of different ways, having the ability to hire up to 135 officers. Uh, that's correct, Mark. What, um, uh, what we're going to use to pay for that is the unspent personnel money in the budget that is there because of the vacancies that we have. Mm -hmm. So uh, we budget for 131 officers, but we don't ever spend it all. Right. So we're going to spend that, uh, that money to hire a few more um, the end result is that council doesn't get the unspent money back at the end right. of the year, yeah. but we get uh, the, uh, the benefit of, of it, probably an average of four officers. Very good. I'm glad, glad to hear that. And then um, another issue that was brought up was the curfew here in the city of Danville and, and enforcing that a little more stringently here in the community. What actually is the curfew times and, and ages that are here in the city of Danville? Uh, Danville has a curfew. The curfew uh, from Sunday through Thursday is 11 o'clock at night till 6 in the morning. And on Friday and Saturday, it's from midnight until 6 in the morning. There are some exceptions. Uh, but uh, basically, if a, if a, a juvenile does not have in, that's someone under the age of 18, okay, yeah, if ask. they don't fit one of those exceptions, uh, specific exceptions, then they can be subject to uh, being charged. It's a civil violation, uh, but uh, uh, the whole purpose is to make sure that the parent knows where the child is. Very good. And uh, so we'll be looking to enforce that a little more stringently here in the city of Danville in, in the months to come. Yes. Okay, very good. And then another issue that was brought up was the streets, cr Street Crimes Unit. And I know if you look here at, at your crime uh, statistics, and you look at 2012 when we had that street crimes unit in full force in the neighborhoods, you saw that crime go down. And I know you, could, you can talk a little bit more about this unit. It's been in place. It's still in place now. Yes. But, talk, but it's in a different kind of, in a different role. But tell me a little bit about uh, the street crimes unit and how we're going to implement that unit and keep it in place uh, moving forward. Uh, we started the street crimes unit here uh, about uh, four years ago. And the purpose of the unit was to uh, focus on the problem areas and uh, we did so in the safe and sound neighborhood area on the north of Danville and then again in the south. Uh, their purpose was to go in and make the necessary charges that uh, for the crimes that were occurring mm -hmm. and they did do that and were very effective in doing that. Um, uh, we have uh, here recently have not been um, uh, at that same level of activity with the street crimes unit for several reasons. Number one is uh, we've got some uh, vacancies and some sicknesses right. and uh, we've had to move officers out of the unit in order to beef up patrol. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other reason is that uh, we did what just about every police department did nationwide after the Ferguson, Missouri uh, incidents and uh, the riots that occurred there. Uh, police departments nationwide uh, did a little introspection, they pulled back, they looked at what they were doing and, and how they were doing it and mm -hmm. because nobody wanted to have a repeat 
of what happened in Ferguson. Right. If we were no different, we did the same thing. We pulled back a little bit and re-examined how we were uh, uh, doing our job, especially with the street crimes unit. But we, we feel confident that we're, uh, we can um, go forward and um, uh, we're going to change some of our uh, strategy a little bit, mm -hmm. but we're going to go forward and, uh, and uh, get them back out there in full force. Very good. Sounds great. And then the last thing that we noted last night was the hiring of a second animal control officer because right now the one officer we have, I guess, goes off. Uh, and There's no one in the evening. I'm not sure what, what time she right. is, is done, but uh, there's no one in the evening hours to handle those animal calls, correct? Well, what uh, happens, we do have one animal control officer, and they are, uh, and she works uh, generally daylight okay. and generally during the week and not on the weekend. Uh, right. There are some flexible hours, but generally that's what the, uh, mm -hmm. the shift is. So when uh, the animal control officer is off, the police officer has to answer those calls. And it does become cumbersome. Um, if you get a call, you don't know if you're going to need the animal control truck to, to uh, so the officer has to decide to go back down to police headquarters, get the animal control truck and answer right. the call, or do I answer the call first and find out what it is? Maybe the, mm -hmm. the dog is gone by the time I get there and I won't need the truck. Mm -hmm. So usually they, they err on that side. They, they answer the call and then if they need the truck, they have right. to get another officer to come to the station, bring the truck out to them, and then you drive to the, mm -hmm. to the, uh, to the pound to take, put them in there. So uh, it, it is time consuming to right. do all of that uh, uh, just to handle an animal control uh, issue. So it would be very beneficial to have that second one on board. I, I, it, that is one of the most efficient things to do. It's, it's spending more money, but the uh, benefit from that as far as the time that the officer is freed from that in order to engage in other uh, crime prevention activities, uh, crime enforcement, then uh, yes, it's it's well worth it. Very good. Well, Chief, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to join us today and, and uh, going over these figures with our citizens at home and, of course, sharing those with City Council, being very transparent with all of our crime statistics. I've done this, you've done this now twice in just the last six months. And when we talk about transparency, before I let you go, uh, we we report all crimes. Um, so, and, and that's one thing, it, it may, uh, you know, be detrimental to us at some point when you look at these figures, but we're going to put everything out there. We're going to report everything. That's correct. We, uh, we report all of our crime and uh, we're very transparent about it. Yeah. Uh, the, the benefit to that, of course, is that we know exactly where our crime problems are. Right. And uh, we know where we have to put our resources and that's the proper way to do, uh, to do this job. Sure. Um, the, uh, uh, it, it, there, there are certainly opportunities out there uh, that end up not recording all of the crime. I, I, I mean, something as simple as going to internet reporting, mm -hmm. uh, encouraging citizens to report crime on the internet. That's, that is a movement that is uh, sweeping law enforcement now. Yeah. It's, it's very, very efficient yeah, to do it that way, right? rather mm -hmm. than sending an officer in a police car to the address and taking the report. Mm -hmm. um, so it's much more efficient to do it on the internet, but the end result is, is you get less crimes reported. Hmm. And so uh, we report them all, so we know where our problems are. Well, Chief, again, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And uh, again, uh, for presenting that to council, it seems like we've got some great things that are, are gonna be implemented here in, in just the next few months. And, uh, and those uh, issues with the, uh, the four officers, the positions that you'll have available now, the street crimes unit being ran back up, and of course the enforcement uh, of curfew. We've been enforcing that curfew law all, as always, but uh, kind of uh, beefing that up a little bit. So again, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Mark. All right. Thank you at home for watching. Until next week, have a great day.